Are you struggling to get a decent job? There are five to six million unemployed people in the United States. What can we do about this? Let's talk about it. First, you might need to move. If you live in a small town right now, the opportunities are not gonna be the same as if you move to a larger town. You could be living in Smallville, North Carolina, Mississippi, Louisiana, whatever it may be. And the biggest store that you have there is a Walmart or a McDonald's or a Wendy's or a Dollar General. You can only go so far if you apply at the local Walmart. How are you expecting to rise to at least get the national average of $55,000, $56,000 a year if you're confined to that small little town? So why do people stay at small little towns? Well, three reasons mainly. It's family, it's friends, and the fear of the unknown. You have roots. You probably were born and raised there or you moved there at a young age. And now you have roots in that area and it's painful to uproot yourself and to put you in a different location where you know almost nobody. Maybe you want to try to go to Washington, D.C., or you want to go out towards California or maybe Chicago, where they have those bigger companies that have bigger salaries and there's bigger opportunities, but you don't have family there. Your aunts, your uncles, your mother, your father, no one's there. Your friends aren't there, so you're scared. You have this fear. I don't know anybody. What if I don't make it? What if I fail? Listen, I understand it's difficult if you have kids, if you have dependents, someone that you have to take care of. But if you don't, you should be planning to pick up and move to where the opportunities are. And in this area, in DC, you can find a room to rent. And you might be asking me, how am I gonna afford housing? The rents are crazy. The mortgages are out of control. The home prices are unaffordable. And I understand that. But here's the thing in this area. You can get a $700 a month room and you start out that way or you get a couple of other guys and you split the rents and that way you have a foothold here and then you can start getting those better opportunities here and you can actually start saving and investing more money and getting yourself out of that horrible position that you may be in. Now, I grew up in Slidell, Louisiana that had maybe 20,000 people in it. There were not a lot of opportunities there, but what they have here, we have government agencies here. We have contracting opportunities here. We have an Amazon. Amazon's second headquarters is here. So they have much larger salaries and there's a lot more room where you can actually climb the ladder and become successful. The unemployment rate in Washington DC right now is under 2%. The national average is above 3%. Now, I'm not saying you have to come out to Washington, D.C. Like I was mentioning earlier, look at some of the larger cities. Go look at Houston. Look at Chicago. Find where you want to be at. Find what you want to do and start moving towards that goal. But, okay, you're telling me you can't move. And I got that. So what do you have to do now? You have to look at remote work positions. And ever since the pandemic, the remote work positions have been expanding. And really all you need is a fast, high-speed connection to the internet and a computer. If you're looking at federal government jobs, there are over 200 remote-only positions available right now today. Looking at LinkedIn, there's thousands of remote positions. And the same thing with Indeed. And if a traditional job doesn't appeal to you, we have companies like Upwork and Fiverr where you can start making a little extra income. The Tutor positions at Tutor.com are paying about $25 an hour. And this is all from your bedroom or living room. Now, I know how the online applying for jobs game works. You apply, you apply, you apply, and you never hear back. You're rejected or you're ignored, and it's frustrating. So how are you going to break in? Have you heard of the third door concept? Let me explain it to you. Say there's a new movie coming out this weekend, and you want to get access and watch that new movie. Say it's a Marvel movie. So there's a few ways that you can do this. Let's look at the, the top two ways to do this. You can actually wait in line until the movie opens and you can spend all that time in line until they open it up and then you can go inside and watch the movie. Another way is you can do an online reservation and you pick the date. You might not get opening date, but you can pick one of the dates and you can go and watch that movie. But there's a third way. What's the third way? What's the third way to watch the movie? If you befriend one of the staff members who works at the movies that maybe a friend of yours knows somebody who works there and you start to build a connection with them and they let you watch the movie a day earlier. So you're enjoying a pre-screening before almost anyone watches the movie. You befriending that person at the movies, that's the third door. So taking it back to jobs again, 
What's the third door in jobs? Well, that would be networking. You should have an account on LinkedIn. If you don't know what LinkedIn is, go ahead and Google it, set up an account. You can make connections with individuals that have commonalities of your background. Say you were in the military, you can search people that have a military background that are working in a company you want to work in. Say you went to a specific university, you can find fellow alumni that actually are in positions you desire to get into and you can reach out to them. You're not asking them for a job, you're reaching out for an informational interview. You're reaching out for 10 minutes of their time, maybe you can buy them a cup of coffee and you, you're asking questions like this. What is it like working at your company? What would make me stand out in your company? What do you wish you knew before applying to your company? You're trying to ask questions like that to get a better understanding of that role and how you can be competitive. When you form a relationship like that, it's much more likely you will get a referral and it's much more likely you will get an interview with that company. You have to learn how to use and leverage LinkedIn. Next is you need to work on your resume. Six or seven seconds. That's all you're getting. And then it's on to the next resume. HR is not spending that much time looking at your resume. And you're competing, not among dozens, not among hundreds, but oftentimes you're competing against thousands of people. So it has to be strong. You have to cut the fluff and the filler. Get rid of it. Just have substance, quantified bullets, articulate your achievements, show them in percentages. Stop saying that you were responsible for that, responsible for this. You need to say what you achieved. What were you able to do above what you were responsible for? Now, creating a resume for a federal government job is different. And I created a course to help people attain federal employment. If you're interested, check out the link in the description below. Okay, so what if when you're creating your resume, you realize your experience and your education is not where it needs to be? Then you have to work on yourself. And you can do this without going to college. In fact, I would encourage you to do this without going to college because right now, college is insanely expensive. And what you probably need to do is get some certifications. You can go on LinkedIn. I'll leave a link in the description below. You can go on LinkedIn and start taking courses that will have you a certificate in Python or a certificate in project management or human resources or whatever interests you. You can take a series of online courses to get that certificate and it's gonna cost almost nothing. And if you're a military veteran or if you're a federal employee, a lot of times you have access to LinkedIn Learning for free. So you can start accumulating these certificates today free. And it's not just online courses on LinkedIn. There's also Coursera and other providers. This all adds legitimacy and support to your resume. On your resume, you're spelling out, I have this achievement, I have this achievement. The certificate is what is supporting that information. Another thing you should consider is volunteering, if you have the time. The experience on your resume does not have to come from a paying job. You could have volunteered at your local government center or volunteered at a church or a school, as long as you're using the skill. Another thing you can start doing is reading more. When you read, it stimulates parts of your brain that make you more articulate, it makes you able to write better and it makes you more confident and gives you different perspectives. It'll improve almost every facet of your life. Read more, get a library card and just check out one book a month. Start there if you have the time and start working on yourself. Next, try local government jobs. This can be your city, your county, your state or federal government. One of the good things about government jobs is they often pay higher than minimum wage and you're gonna come into the door with benefits. You will have pay time off. A lot of times you'll be working towards your pension. So try to look for those local government jobs first and then expand out to the county, expand out to the state. Now, if you are angry at the end of this video because you think the system is broken and it's not fair, then I want you to remember one thing. In order to get different results, you have to do different things. Don't just give up, you can get something better. Okay, so if working for one of the top five companies that still provide a retirement pension interests you, then I want you to watch this video next. If you would like to see more videos like this, please click like and subscribe. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.